me to start. For what day? This is Monday, the 13th of April. Hello, church. Well, we've had the Easter weekend behind us, and now this is opportunity for us just to carry on these daily lockdown devotions. You know, I was talking to some of our business folk the other day on a Zoom session on Saturday morning, and uh, I uh, just reminded us all that, in fact, there was a huge lockdown between the two testaments, and what they call it is the intertestament period, where, uh, in fact, there was no prophet, no one was speaking. So from the Old Testament, uh, when the pen was put down to when the pen was picked up again, no one was really speaking. That's 400 years of lockdown. And yet, in the midst of it all, during that lockdown season, God was preparing not only the forerunner of Jesus Christ, but also Jesus himself to come in and be savior of the world. So that's an incredible thing. But what about the lockdown with, with Jonah in, in, the, in, in the belly of the fish? It doesn't actually say a whale. It just says that, uh, that God prepared a fish to swallow him. And in his lockdown state, what you'll find is that his attitude changes and he begins to give thanks. And then, of course, God causes that fish to spit him out onto the, onto the shore. Um, well, I can think of other periods of lockdown as well, but just those two are going to suffice for us this morning. And so what does God do in the midst of lockdown? Well, of course, we've just fresh out of the, the celebration of our Resurrection Sunday when Jesus rose again from the dead, uh, which is profound. There are a lot of good people that died, but only Jesus rose again from the dead. And so what I want to do this morning is have a look at Matthew 28, and we'll just have a brief account of how the mood was and the setting of scripture says, now after the Sabbath, near dawn of the first day, this is Matthew 28, um, Mary and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the boulder back and sat upon it. Uh, his appearance was like lightning and his garment as white as snow. And those keeping God were so frightened at the sight of him that they were agitated and they trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be alarmed and frightened, for I know why you're here and you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. But he's not here. He's risen. That's an incredible line, that, isn't it? He is risen. As he said he would do. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So, of course, we go back to Friday. That was the day of great extravagance from heaven where God is so committed and faithful to his word and to us. And Jesus takes upon himself our sin and uh, goes through the brutal experience of a crucifixion. And then, of course, we come into the silent Saturday, which I was able to speak a little earlier to our business folk. Um, and you would think, gee, what conversation was happening on Saturday? You know, the Bible doesn't say much about the Saturday, outside of the fact that we do know that Joseph of Arimathea, as well as Nicodemus, uh, who were members of the council, incidentally, who actually sentenced Jesus, but clearly they were not in favor of it, but the majority got the vote there, it seemed. And so what you have is that the two of them partner together and actually bring Jesus' body down and bury him in Joseph's tomb, actually. So there's a lot of things in there that I think the business folk really enjoyed when I shared about the partnership expression. So now we look at Sunday. Sunday was this power moment. Jesus rises again from the dead. And look what's happening here. He tells the women, they're the first ones to preach the gospel, the good news that he has risen. Um, and so it just shows you we, we God in the orb of things, how he sees women. And so he was giving them the first talk to say, go and tell the people. Because that's really our message, isn't it? Is Christ is risen. That's what we want to meditate on for the rest of our lives. And in fact, we'll, resitate, we'll meditate on it right through into eternity as well. So this is a power moment. Our world is in a chaos moment. Um, we can't always see and understand the dynamics. But we do know when we read a scripture like Romans 8, 28, where it says that God loves us so much that all things will work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to his purposes. That is true. That's the word of God. And so where the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard. And at this moment in time, it's us, the church. We're the ones that are carrying hope. And the people who carry the most hope are the ones that will have the most influence. And so this morning, I want to encourage you. While we're not able to explain everything, we do know this. We can explain that God is still on the throne and God is alive and well. And so therefore, we should take heart. I just want to encourage you a little. The other morning while I was praying, um, I'd gone out into the garden and uh, I lifted up at one point in my prayer, I lifted up my head and I just looked at the sky and straight at me was the Southern Cross. 
And I found that so fascinating, you know, I just thought, my goodness, there in the midst of this little gap, because it was a cloudy evening, there was the Southern Cross just staring at me. Had I looked a second later, I wouldn't have seen it. But I looked up and I saw that, and for me, it just spoke to my heart, just saying, you know what, maybe there's a little dark patch across the world, and we're finding ourselves in a spot of bother. There's a wilderness period, but God says, I'll send the stream. And as I looked up again, it was gone. Not the Southern Cross was gone, but the view of it was gone as clouds just covered up the view that I had enjoyed. And I do want to say this, that right now, in the midst of this cloudy moment, God looks down at all of us, and He sees us. And so our prayer for you is, look up, see that there is God who still reigns in heaven. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Okay.